Shalom, shalom. Greetings. Like I always say, it's not about what you're seeing on the outside. It's the disposition in your heart. What's your perception inside you? What is your disposition? What do you see? What do you have in your heart? Are you excited about uh, what you are seeing from within, not what you are seeing on the outside? If that is your disposition or position, you have to be sure that, yes, you are going to have a great day. Because that's the secret. That's the secret. You are the headquarters of God. You are the house of God. You are the temple. See, in you God dwells. It's not out there. It's inside you that makes you special and different. An honorable vessel of God. So we can begin by seeing things from within us. Even if you want, you can create one, some, whatever you want to create on the inside of you. I'm not saying about what you're seeing on the outside because the outside is just the outcome or results of what we've been carrying inside us. I'm telling you, we have not come to appreciate, agree. We don't, many people don't even want to agree that what we are seeing on the outside is a result of what we, we carry in the inside. And we haven't come to that realization. We think, you know, these are hazards or some chances that some accidents or happenings or um, um, coincidences. It's not true. If you only knew that, well, what you see on the outside is it's just an experience of what people have been creating on the, outside, on the inside of them. Oh my goodness, they would take care of their inside. They won't bother what they are going through on the outside. They will focus on the inside. Jesus said, there's no evil thing that will come and defile you. He says, whatever defiles you, what defiles man is what comes out of him. It's not what comes from outside, but what comes from out, inside you. So that means the perception you have, the thought you carry in you, will defy you. It's not what you receive from outside, it's what comes out of you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we are blessed today, once again, to have uh, this opportunity, wonderful opportunity to share with you the good news of all time. We are in Romans chapter 8. Let's do some think with uh, verse 27 these are last two verses i want to talk about and then uh, flow continue i continue in the as a nation of who the holy spirit is because we need him we need this Romans 8, 27 still is talking about the same thing. He says, And he that uh, searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. We're still talking about the Holy Spirit. And that's why I'm saying, verse 27, verse 28, I'm going to deal with them. These two verses. He's talking about, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth that is in the mind. What is in the mind of the spirit? Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Well, these words sound familiar because we have been dealing with them. I want to use another version to help us again to uh, clarify what the writer is talking about. Ah, this is way version called way ah but he who tracks the labyrinth of the heart needs no words to divide what the spirit means he knows what the what his spirit intercedes he knows that his spirit intercedes for the hallowed ones in just the way that god desires that's way. Let me use another version. And God who knows the heart secrets understands of, uh, of course, the Spirit's intention as he prays for those who love God. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. In other words, the Holy Spirit takes over in our hearts and we find that we are speaking words and they but by the Spirit that are according to the will of God because the Spirit knows the will of God. Another version says, For indeed it is according to the mind of God that he makes intercession for the saints. For indeed it is according to the mind of God that he makes intercession for the saints. So he makes intercession for the saints. For indeed it is according to the mind of God that he makes intercession for the saints. So the Holy Spirit, you know, this is why we need him. This is why we need to acknowledge him because he makes intercession according to the will, according to the purpose, and according to the mind of God. So having the Holy Spirit in us, we have access to the mind of God because the one who has the mind of God is in us. So we can have the mind of God. See? And God who searches our innermost being knows what the Spirit means because he pleads for God's people in God's own way. Thank you, Lord, in God's own way. This is beautiful. And the searcher and the searcher of hearts knows the Spirit's mind in that he intercedes with God for God's people or the searcher of heart can read what the Spirit prays to him within us, nor through it be unspoken what is in the desire, what is the desire of the Spirit. For God who searches the heart, the, the innermost recesses of the heart can uh, interpret his own Spirit's meaning. He knows that his own will regulates its petitions and that they are offered for men dedicated to his service. He who searcheth, searches our hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, namely to intercede in, in, in according with God's will on behalf of the church. Well, <clears throat> all these verses, ver vi versions, are talking about the same thing to help us to understand what it means to search. For instance, let me talk about this. This, what does it mean to search? You know, it says, and that that he that searcheth. You know, searcheth. It says this Greek word is ara. now, this denotes a. A thorough examination or investigation in order to learn something. So, God does the investigation. A thorough examination. Examination or investigation. He does examine. Thank you, Lord. But what is the intention of this examination? In order to learn something. It was used in reference to first century professional searchers, such as custom officials who would unload the commercial cargo of merchants and search through their articles to evaluate the tax that would be levied on them. So, in the percent in the present context, it refers to God the Father who thoroughly examines believers' hearts and knows what the Spirit wants done on our behalf. So, we have the example that was picked from the first century by um, the custom. Um, yes, um, the custom officials, um, they will unload commercial cargo um, of merchants. And so they will search in their articles so that they may evaluate the tax, you know, that they will impose on 
whatever they have found. So that is the idea of searching, you know, the poise deriving from that, that, uh, from the first century what was being what was going on so in the present context like we said it refers to god the father who thoroughly examines uh believers hearts and uh, knows what the spirit wants done on our behalf so you see again the holy spirit is there to ensure that we are aligned and now, since he dwells in each and every one, he knows where you are, he knows your level, he knows what you understand so far, he knows everything about you. And so, whatever he does in your life is to align you, depending on where you're standing today, to the grand plan and purpose of God. And so, God searches the heart. In other words, see what the Spirit of God has to say or do when he's interceding in you or when he's helping you. Just rest assured that this that is going to come to pass is going to yield fruits so no words are necessary between the father and the spirit see for he understands and agrees with what the spirit thinks and receives his admirable articulations on behalf of the believer this means that the father is fully aware of his spirit's way of thinking he knows his mindset for they are one. Glory to God. So the oneness of the Father and the Spirit enables the Spirit to do the work in us and He doesn't need to explain. He, the Father understands. When the Spirit of God is carrying out His ministry in you, well, that is exactly the will of God. That is exactly the, the will of the Father because they are one and yet they are distinct. So the Spirit of God dwelling in you is to enable you, is to empower you, is to energize you, is to align your life with the purpose and the plan of God. You see, I've found out that um, without the Holy Spirit, because there are some extra biblical realities, there are things which probably you will not read in the Bible, but you will need to be laid by the Spirit. How is that possible if the Spirit of God wasn't there? And how is that possible if the Spirit of God is unknown? See, he knows how to guide you. He knows how to lead you. In fact, that's why I'm saying the most important thing we should do here is to first and foremost acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If we want to go further, we have to acknowledge the presence of the Spirit in our lives. He's there to help. He's there to support. He's on your side. He wants to do things with you, for you, with you. This is important. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So the Spirit of God, the Father searches your heart to see what the Spirit of God is doing inside. Whatever He does aligns you to the plan and the purpose of God. We are blessed to have the Holy Spirit in our lives. We should acknowledge Him. Shalom, shalom. <music>